New York buildings are on fire, neighborhoods are on fire, and everything is collapsing. Make sure you hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Also, make sure you tap into that Teach Henley 30% off your first order plus a free gift. And then on top of that, make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Let's continue, y'all. And we're on the air with breaking news this morning. A fire in the Bronx engulfing a number of stores. Well, Sky Fox is over the scene right now. Let's get right to Lizette Nunez. She is live at the scene in the Kingsbridge section with the details. Good morning, Lizette. What can you tell us? Dana Tashani, well, we've been catching up with some of the owners of these businesses. A lot of them have been standing by here next to us, just waiting to get an update on the status of their stores, but also try to get a sense of what that damage looks like. I just spoke to the son of the owner that owns the salon right here that we're taking a look at right now. He told me that his mother is devastated. They were just working on that salon about a month ago. They just opened. And then they got the call around 4 o'clock in the morning that it was up in flames. That's been the sentiment that we've been getting from talking to a lot of business owners here. As far as what's happening, you can still see firefighters are up on the ladder, still dousing on top of the buildings with water. It was around 3.30 in the morning. That's when the first call came in. This eventually became a four-alarm fire. The FDNY telling us that seven businesses were impacted. But just taking a look out here, it looks like the deli and possibly the barber shop and nail salon probably seen the heaviest damage just from taking a look outside. We were zooming in on the deli shop a little bit earlier. And if we take a look inside, you could see that there's this mangled mess in there charred wood, uh, metal in there. We were seeing firefighters with axes trying to get in there. We don't know exactly where the fire started, but that we do know that firefighters were spending a good portion of their time there. A still very active scene. Once again, this is on 231st Street and Broadway. We're about one block away from the train station. This is uh, the one line, and we do know that the trains have been skipping this station because obviously everything that has been going on here. So once again, still very active seen at last check with the FDNY. We do know of at least one minor injury. So of course, we'll continue to stay updated and let you know what's happening out here. But that's the latest here from the Kingsbridge section of the Bronx. Dan Tishani will send things back. So... You know, the thing about it is that I've been reading a whole lot about New York because obviously New York is, is basically the center of the universe when it comes to the United States of America. And it's funny because the people is also mentioning it inside of the chat. And they were saying that, yo, I think that um, New York is sinking. And I've been reading about that, too. And so uh, what they've been doing is a lot of investment and in infrastructure updates in New York because they saying that the infrastructure is so bad in New York and that it's possibly a sinking city. That sounds crazy to me, the fact that New York is sinking. But on the flip side of it, this is also what was happening over in New York. Tonight, shocking new surveillance footage showing the moment a Bronx apartment building partially collapses. Another angle showing people run for safety as debris and dust cascades onto the ground below. I heard like a big bull. One neighbor, Shakira Almonte, recalling the horrifying moment she witnessed through her apartment window. When I look outside, I just see people running. Canines called in to search the rubble for anyone who may have been trapped. But the FDNY saying miraculously no one was severely injured and that as of last night it had gone through a large pile of debris up to 12 feet high. And Look at all of the firefighters. Are they not out there uh, making all of their money? The firefighters over in, I wouldn't even want to be a firefighter in New York. It's too many people, too many accidents that can happen. If I'm, if I'm going to be a police officer or a firefighter, I wouldn't even be a police officer, first of all, in a major city. I think that police officers don't make enough money. They already underappreciated. I was watching a video of firefighters. Actually, you know what? After that, after my show and display of wealth that I said that I wouldn't do, uh, even when it comes to these watches and stuff like that, I think I'm about to put on my Apple Watch at this point. I don't even feel like wearing this type of stuff. But, but um, I wouldn't even want to be a police officer or a firefighter in any kind of major city right now. Spots and had found no victims. Now investigators are focused on how this happened and if there were missed warning signs. 
Department of Building documents obtained by NBC News shows the building had open violations. A summons issued by city inspectors just last month raising concerns about what they called deteriorated and broken mud sills, the platforms that sit under scaffolding columns and distribute weight. The inspector writing that there was, quote, one vertical member with missing mud sill, which can compromise the structural stability, causing a potential collapse. It is not clear if the inspector was talking about a potential collapse of the scaffolding or the building itself. The thing about it is that whenever something major like this happens, especially when it brings this level of visibility, um, what happens is they start deep diving into the history of it because it's documented, especially from an inspector's perspective, which is interesting because I know that as a person that is invested in real estate and even right now, you know, I've built restaurants and I used to give, I used to hate dealing with some inspectors until I started building a relationship with them and I started to understand exactly why it was important for them to be so strict on what's going on as far as the codes and the violations and how to make sure that certain things is done. They can't just pass you. And so I know that some of the some of the conversations that's happening in society is easing restrictions and the ability for people to be able to do certain things. And I do think that there's a, um, a lot of red tape sometimes, but also I think that there's incredible value in what an inspector does or the cities do, cities do in order to make sure that certain codes are, are upheld because this type of thing can happen and it can be absolutely catastrophic and then they can catch a a lawsuit as a result of people being injured as a result of it. In a press conference, Department of Building officials saying there were also facade issues flagged in a report yeah, Apple Watch submitted on. by the building's owner in March of 2021. That report did find unsafe facade conditions, seven of them, uh, mortar that was deteriorating, cracked bricks. The commissioner saying investigators will look more into the cause once the site is cleared for safety by first responders. But tonight, residents are still reeling from the shock. The ground was shaking. It was just like it was an earthquake. Angel Soto inside with his mother as part of that That's building crazy. started to come down. Look, you can still see the kids' coats. Yo, that's insane to think that your kids can be inside doing a homework or plan. And then the entire building just started falling apart. And you know, the funniest part about it is that um, I see a lot of these cookie cutter type apartment buildings um, going up. And obviously, this looks like, you know, an apartment building that's been there for an extended period of time. And so um, whatever it is that they built, we don't really know the history as much as we do. But I see a lot of cookie cutter even homes, not just apartment buildings, but homes. I see a lot of cookie cutter homes and apartment buildings going up. And what I see from those those going up is that it just looks like shady, shoddy work. Not even shoddy. The materials and how fast that they're throwing them up. And on a regular basis, I talk to inspectors because when you get into this industry, you start building relationships. I talk to inspectors and contractors that talk about the amount of corners that get cut on trying to hurry up and throw up these buildings. And let me tell you what's wrong with a lot of this, this new construction that we see happening out here today. Nobody wants to take their time. Nobody wants to do it right. And they throw in, they trying to throw up these buildings like they China because everything is financially incentivized. So let me tell you what the play is, for example. A lot of times you'll have a developer and then they'll, you know, obviously finance the project because 99% of all projects is financed, right? And so this is how they plan it. They throwing up these buildings as quick as possible with the minimum amount of expectation as far as inspection. So they're, they're just looking to pass the inspection. They're not necessarily looking to give the best product. They're looking to pass the inspection, the minimum amount that they have to do in order to pass the inspection, which is what makes the inspector's job so hard. The inspector's jobs wouldn't be so hard if you hadn't had so many people trying to cut corners and incentivize them to just hurry up and pass the inspection, which then makes it even cheaper of a structure or it doesn't give a quality a quality um, build. You'll get in a building and or you will get into a house and on the outside, it looks good and everything like that. But what you can't see can't see is the thickness in a drywall, right? Or what people don't understand is that when you build in a restaurant, you have to have a certain thickness to the drywall in order to create a fire 
a fire barrier from the next business or to make it less likely for it to be able to spread if anything happens. So you'll hear, hear these hollowed out buildings. You can hear what your neighbor is doing in the next door. The floors are super shallow. You know what I'm saying? And so, so you start to get different problems throughout the experience, but the developer doesn't care. And the reason that the developer doesn't care is because they built this building up. They wanted to get it to at least 65% occupancy. And then what they do is they sell it over into another investor, an institutional investor that then sits, that brings in um, a management company, a property management company in order to make sure that they maintain facility and collect all of the rents. And then it just becomes a cycle from, from, from a financial perspective of developers hurrying up, throwing up buildings, institutional investors paying them out for the buildings. They get a, you know, some millions of dollars on top of whatever the cost was or the carrying costs combined with the total development cost of the project is based off of the occupancy rate and based off of the future projections financially of that particular building. And so you have people meeting minimum expectations, doing shoddy work. They know that these buildings and these construction projects are not ideal as far as the long term prospects of it being a great, great facility. It's going to cost more management long term, the longer that that building ages. And then you'll get into a situation where something will absolutely go wrong. And then they go all the way back to, OK, what was the documentation? What was the inspection? They want to hold people accountable. But it's all financially driven. It's all financially driven. And so when you then get people that want to do quality work, it's going to be leaps and bounds much better than people just hurrying up trying to throw up a building in order to continue to get rich. Money should never be the motivating factor. Greatness, knowing that you're going to be well compensated for how well you do, should be the motivating factor. But when you start to overvalue money, you put people's safety at risk for the projections of trying to get a bigger number on the back end. And this is one of the reasons why character matters. You have to be careful who you do business with, not just how much money that you can get out of the project, because you're then going to be held accountable on the back end. Open the door and the super's like, no, the building's collapsed, you better get out. The New York City Emergency Management Department telling NBC News they are helping more than 100 displaced residents. It's devastating. Uh, I feel for the family, with prayers out to them, and hopefully there's, you know, issues that, I mean, the, the issues are resolved, and hopefully our city does a good job of making sure that everything goes well with them. Dozens of families left without a home over the holidays. Valerie Castro joins us from the scene tonight. Valerie, I kind of want to go back to that video that captured the moments the collapse happened. Do we know how much time people had essentially to get That's out correct. of the way before that side of the building came, to, came crashing down? Yeah, well, Tom, if you take a look at the video, it looks like people just had seconds. Yo, literally. Man, I would have got out the way and then I would have made myself trip and fall. Oh, my God, I'm so hurt. Everybody getting sued. Everybody getting sued. I would have got out the way and then I would as soon as I'd have got out the way, oh and then I'd have tripped and fell. I would have just been laying there unconscious, projecting myself to be unconscious. Everybody getting sued. I, I don't want to be on the news. I don't want to talk about nothing. Get the camera, pick me up off the ground, what throw some throw some bricks on my around my waist, put some dirt on my face, punch me in the face and make sure there's some blood coming out of my mouth, slap me in the head a little bit, punch me in my eye. And I'm going to just lay there. I think he's breathing. I'm going to just lay there. For the next three days, I'm not even going to open up my eyes. I promise you I can pull it off. For the next three days, I'm not even opening up my eyes. I'm just going to lay there. Because I almost died anyway. I might as well be compensated for it. ...to get out of the way. The bottom level of this building has several businesses, including a convenience store. People there tell NBC New York that they actually heard a loud noise right before the building collapsed. A pipe I'm surprised. Burst, and then they saw some water trickling out. That was their indication that something was wrong. And they say that is when they ran outside with just seconds to spare. Tom. And then do we know what the next steps are here for the city and, and for whomever owned that building? Right, so the Department of Buildings has been here throughout the day with a team of forensic engineers. They say they are here to monitor what will be the emergency demolition of that corner of the building that collapsed. They spent the day putting up a sort of plywood structure or plywood wall around the intersection so they can safely do that. But of course, their investigation into why and how this all happened is still continuing. Tom. 
That's crazy. So New York is basically falling apart. Uh, the whole entire country is just completely falling apart financially, physically, infrastructure. Everything is just absolutely going bad.